Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today we are here to predict the Women's Prize 2024 and I'm gonna do my predictions just a tiny little bit different. So instead of telling you concretely this is the book that I expect to win and here's maybe one alternate, I'm instead gonna give you my odds on each individual book and the likelihood of them winning. I'm gonna talk to you about why the judges might choose each book and why they might not choose each book and hopefully that'll give you some ideas for what to expect. This is of course my very first time ever having read an entire long list for an award. And this has been a lot of fun. I didn't delve into this in the same depth that a lot of other channels have done just because I don't really honestly know the awards at the level of depth that some of the channels that follow the awards regularly do. This was just for me to get to know this process a little bit better and maybe to give myself a chance to delve into some writing that might not come across my radar otherwise. So, you know, take my predictions with a grain of salt. You know, at the end of the day, I am a rookie with this. So first we're gonna talk about Restless Dolly Maunder by Kate Grenville. This is a book that is from Australia and this is kind of a weird mix. It is not quite nonfiction and not all the way historical fiction. Dolly Maunder is our author's grandmother and this story is about her life. So by all accounts, it is based on reality, but there are points within the story that are filled in with fictional narratives. And this is, I think, hands down the book that everybody is a little bit surprised to see on the shortlist. It isn't a bad book, and I think that the subject matter of it is relatively interesting, seeing a woman who has this desire for so much in life in a time of real inequity. I think that that was a subject that I really appreciated. However, when you look at the writing quality and whether this book does anything revolutionary or not, this falls flat as a choice. Why the judges might pick this book. Honestly, they've all slipped and fallen and collectively hit their heads. Why the judges might not pick this book. Like I mentioned previously, while this book is really interesting, I don't think that it compares in the literary aspect to the rest of the books on this list. It is a pretty straightforward narrative. It is a story that lacks a lot of struggle and like climax moments that make the book really interesting. The pacing is okay, but it doesn't keep you at the edge of your seat. There's just, to me, nothing about this book that's gonna make it really stand out in my mind five years from now. I'll probably remember that I'd read it, but I don't think it'll be one of those books where I'm like, wow, that affected so much change in my life or that author did something so interesting and so unique. And now my odds of this book winning. So I am gonna give this a 5% out of 100% on odds of winning. Of course, anything is possible and we have probably seen weirder books win other book prizes. Sometimes the book that wins is the one that everybody hates the most. So I, I can't say it's impossible that this wins, but I would say that in my opinion, this is the least likely book to win the women's prize. Next up, we're gonna talk about Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy. This is a book that follows a woman as she struggles with postpartum issues. She is feeling very unsupported. She has a child who requires all her time and all of her energy, and she's also struggling with this loss of identity. Her partner is completely unsupportive and has chosen to be absent with the excuse of doing all this extra work. And the reality is, is he just doesn't wanna be involved with his family. This was personally one of my favorite books on the long list. This is a book that I did not expect to like or relate to as I am not a mother, nor will I ever be a mother. And I thought that, you know, it would be something I felt really detached from and that didn't resonate. It wasn't the part about motherhood that resonated so much, but the general struggles of being a woman, of being unsupported, of taking care of household needs, of reaching out to people and expecting them to to empathize and not receiving that empathy that you need. Again, I think that this might hit harder for somebody that had been through postpartum struggles as well, but I just felt like there was a lot that most women will relate to. So why would the judges pick this book to win? I think that if they pick this book to win, it's because they've appreciated a novel that has really gorgeous writing that talks about an emotionally complex and deep topic. This is the women's prize, so I think it would be fitting that a book about womanhood would be a winner. And I think in light of some of the attacks on reproductive care around the world, this could be some pretty interesting commentary. Why the judges might not pick this. So while this is one of my personal favorites on the entire long list, I think that if the judges go for an Irish author this year, it's more likely to be Anne Enright. Anne Enright has been around longer. She has a larger work of literature. She's well-respected. And a lot of people view it as being her turn to win. Uh, I hope that the awards don't revolve around it being someone's turn and that that the best book actually wins. But I could definitely see them picking Anne and Wright over Claire Kilroy and then Claire Kilroy eventually getting a turn down the road. 
Odds that this book wins. I gave this a 10% out of 100. So I do think it's more likely than Restless Dolly Maunder, but I don't think this is the most likely winner. Again, as I mentioned, if an Irish author is featured, I think it's more likely that it will be Anne Enright. And while I do think that this book has some very relevant themes, I think it's gonna be overshadowed by books like Enter Ghost that are extraordinarily relevant in this particular moment. Next up, we're gonna talk River East, River West by Abbe Ray Lisker. So this is being dubbed as the anti-American dream story. We have a woman who moves to China, falls in love with the culture and the country and decides to stay. She ends up falling in love with her landlord and getting married. And there is some dynamics in the family that obviously change with this new stepfather. The daughter who has also grown up going to Chinese schools now wants to go to an American expat school and really pushes for that. We get to see the life of the mother and new husband and the life of the child going to this new expat Pat school. Why the judges might pick this book. As I've mentioned, this book has been described as the anti-American dream. And so I could see the judges picking this as a commentary on American exceptionalism and anti-Chinese sentiments. This is a book that I think seems particularly relevant as the presidential elections creep closer in the United States. Why the judges might not pick this book. So this is a debut novel. And while I think it does some really interesting things and makes some interesting commentary, I don't think that this book is as polished as some of the other books on the shortlist. My odds on this book winning are 10% out of 100%. Again, I won't say that it is impossible, but I do view it as highly unlikely that this book wins. While I suspect that this author may be featured again on future lists. I just don't know that this particular book is a winner. Next up, we have The Run the Run by Anne Enright. This is a book where we have a mother and a daughter, and they are reflecting on the patriarch in their family. He is a famous Irish poet, and he abandoned the family and left to move to the United States. There is a very complex relationship with him and his identity as the mother who is abandoned by him resents him and has anger towards him. While the granddaughter idolizes him, she dreams of being a writer and she's created this larger than life image of him in her head. This book is interspersed with poetry that Anne Entwright wrote herself as this character. And I think that that really added an interesting quality to this book. Why the judges might pick this book. Anne Enright is a well-respected author with a large breadth of work across novels, short stories, and nonfiction. They might also pick this book if they value lovely writing and story structure over a more relevant theme. Enright has also already won a Booker Prize and been shortlisted for the Women's Prize previously. I've personally heard that book awards can sometimes be like, oh, it's your turn to win, you know, who's been in line the longest. So if that at all plays into this decision, then Enright would be the likely winner. Why the judges might not pick this book. Again, this comes down to two things, I think. One, the judges may want to avoid that discussion of the awards being biased towards whatever author has been in line the longest. And the second thing is that the judges may value a book that has more politically relevant themes at this time. My odds of this winning are 20% out of 100%. I don't think that it is impossible that Anne Enright wins this. In fact, I think she has a decent shot. This is a book that a lot of people really love. It does have really lovely writing and Enright does some really interesting things with the poetry work that's interspersed throughout the story. That said, knowing who the judges are, I feel like they may lean towards those politically relevant themes over just an old favorite. Then we're going to talk Brotherless Night by V.V. Ganeshnathan. This is a book that is about the Sri Lankan civil war and the rise of the Tamil Tigers. We see the story through the perspective of a young woman who had dreamed of being a doctor and then becomes instead a field medic in the war dealing with casualties. It's a book that is told in a detached memoir style fictional narrative. Why the judges might end up picking this one. I feel like there is a lot of hype around this book and I feel like the hype around this book started long before the Women's Prize even announced the long list. This is a book I've been hearing rumblings about, a lot of really good critical feedback about, and I think that that hype could continue through winning the Women's Prize. I also think that the memoir-esque storytelling style of this book makes it stand out from other historical fictions and feel a little bit more unique. I also think that the way that this Civil War played out and the commentary that this book makes on extremism and radicalism is very relevant in the world today. Why the judges might not pick this book. This book has been a bit polarizing in its reviews due to the emotionally detached narrative style. While I personally thought that a detached narrative really fit the main character, not everyone seems to love it and not everyone connects with this book really well. If the judges couldn't connect with it, it might not stand up against some of the more overtly emotional books on this list. My odds on this winning are about 20% out of 100%. I think that this has a strong shot at winning the women's prize. 
if forced to choose between the Wren, the Wren, and Brotherless Knight for second place, I think I would lean in favor of Brotherless Knight. I just feel that the discussion around this book feels really similar to the discussion of other books that have won the Women's Prize in the past, and I can easily imagine a scenario where this becomes the winner. Lastly, we're going to talk about Enter Ghost by Isabella Khaman. This is a book about a character named Sonia. She is a Palestinian woman who's been living in the UK. She is a well-known actress, and she has been in a questionable relationship that did not end very well. She has returned to Haifa to visit her sister, and while she's there, she meets a woman named Miriam who is a local director putting on the play Hamlet in classical Arabic in the West Bay. Before she knows it, Sonia is rehearsing the lines for Gertrude and viewing all the obstacles to putting on a play in Palestine. Why the judges might pick this book to win. They may view this book as the most complete book on the list. We have very interesting characters, not always likable, but interesting. We have a really interesting scenario that this book is taking place in and an interesting concept for the story. This book is thematically rich and really relevant to the world at hand today. And while the book is not as prosy as some of the other books on the list, the writing in this is very solid. The judges may want a book that is thematically relevant to the world today and or they may feel that this is a commentary on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Why the judges might not pick this book? The same reason. They may avoid picking this book for fear of backlash if their pick is perceived as political commentary. My odds on this book winning are 35% out of 100%. So if you've been following along, you'll know that this, in my opinion, is the most likely book to win. If it doesn't win, honestly, I feel like it would be a missed opportunity. Not only is Enter Ghost thematically important, but it's a well-written and thought out book too. I view this again as one of the more complete books on this list. And for that reason, I think it should be the winner. So that is everything I have to say on my shortlist predictions. I hope that you found this video interesting and like me I hope you are excited to see which book is announced as the winner around midweek. If you like the video hit the thumbs up, comment down below and let me know which book you think is the most likely to win the women's prize and if you're not already subscribed to this channel you know what to do hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video and that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining. Bye!